I've been sharing with you that I've been going through this class with Anand Marotra, um, who's an amazing, amazing teacher, amazing um, soul with tremendous wisdom. I'm taking um, his class, which is called The Path to Radical Self-Mastery. Hey, Shilin. Um, and he talks about a relationship to the self. And he's got some really cool perspectives that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So that's at the heart of our practice for today. Hello, Susan. So for those of you who have been practicing with me for a while, I virtually always am in portrait mode. Today, I'm on my computer, so I'm in landscape. I know. You're like, oh, my goodness. I thought the day would never come that Laura would be in landscape. But here we are. So I'm going to invite you to come to the mat. And I've got our music in the background. I'm wearing my headset, so I'm not sure how much you can hear that. This is all me just figuring stuff out. We're experimenting. So come to the head of the mat and stand. In Tadasana. I've got my iPad so I can track your, um, your comments while I'm here on the mat. Palms shine forward. Feel yourself dropping down. And today's practice, again, is about our relationship to our self. Our relationship to who we are. So just feeling in the moment, scanning the body, scanning the mind, seeing how you're feeling. Feeling the feet, lift the toes, spread the toes, settle the toes down. A little bit of a tuck to the tail in your Tadasana. Eyes are closed. And just feel yourself here in this moment, in this practice. Another breath. And then let's inhale those arms out and up, reach up. And exhale those hands down the midline. A nice, easy Surya Namaskar breath. Inhaling those arms up, reach up. Exhale, hands down the midline. And inhale those arms out and up, reach up, coming up onto the balls of the feet. Woo, a little bit of balance, opening the eyes, good focused gaze. Really feeling those arms beautiful and broad, feeling yourself opening up, opening up to this relationship of self. Settle the heels down and fold forward, coming down. Head hangs heavy. Maybe a gentle sway from side to side. Just allowing yourself to drop here into the body. Another breath. And roll it up. Palms shine forward. Feel a little bit of a soft knees. Shoulders down the back. And let's take our breath of joy. So let's inhale with the breath of joy. Remember that we sniff the hands forward. We sniff the hands out. And then we sniff the hands all the way up. And then we exhale down. So I want you to think about really filling up the lungs with air. Okay? So it's as if you're sniffing the bottom third of the lungs full. Um, second third of the lungs full, last third of the lungs full, and exhale. So sniff, 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 exhale. Inhale, 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 exhale. Breath of joy. You can inhale through the nose, and if you'd like to, you can exhale through the mouth. Really nice falling out breath. Let's do one more. And fold over. Fold over. Soften those knees. Head hangs heavy. Inhale, arch up halfway, flat back. Exhale, release. 
and step that right leg back. Hands frame the foot, beautiful long line of energy, shoulders down the back. And then ground the hands and come on back into your down dog. Walk your dog out. Settling one heel and then the other. Head hangs heavy. <sighs> Breathing here. Another breath. And then come on down with the knees under hips, hands under shoulders. Inhale, lift it up into cow. Exhale, arch. And as you're here in your Bittalasana and Marjariyasana, I invite you to close your eyes and think about your relationship to yourself. So as I was listening to the lecture with Anand, Anand Marotra, the man I am studying with, brilliant, brilliant, wise soul, he was talking about how when it comes down to, you know, key desires that we have in our lives, one of the key desires is the desire for relationship. Curl those back toes under, reach back, catch the pinkies and sit on the heels. And let's inhale those arms up and drop the right hand down to the middle of the back, catch the elbow and just open up, maybe a tiny bit of a side bend, really breathing into the tricep, breathing into the soles of the feet and inhale the arms up overhead and go the other way. So the thing that Anand said that really lit me up where I was like, I have never thought about it that way is he talks about how, inhale those arms up, come off those feet, curl the toes, lift the hips, down dog. He talks about how with this relationship, we've got two key ways of thinking about relationships. Step that right foot forward. And he describes that as we've got our horizontal relationships, okay, which is our relationships with others, our relationships with, you know, our loved ones, our parents, our colleagues, you know, our significant other, if we have a significant other. And that's an inherent part of being human is being in relationship. He said, you know, very often we say, oh, I'm not in relationship, quote unquote. He says, he said, that's crazy. Everyone's in relationship. You know, we define it so narrowly coming forward into your forward fold. He says, you know, even if you live alone, you're in relationship with, you know, the people you interact with when you leave the house, you're in relationship with the world, you're in relationship with your pets. And he describes these again as horizontal. Inhale those arms out and up, reach up, lift up, hands to the heart space. And what he says that's so transformative in my mind, inhale those arms out and up, is that the most important relationship we have is our vertical relationship. Exhale, come on down. Soften those knees, let the head hang heavy. And just, if you'd like, you can take your fists and pound the hips. Oh, I feel like I'm going to knock my earbud out. Maybe I'm not going to do that. And then relax forward. If you like it, keep going. <laughs> I'm worried I was about to lose my earbud. Um, and then arch up, come on, up, reach up. Hands to the heart space. And then reaching back, catching your yoga mudra, widen those feet, okay? And soften the knees and really drop the hands down. Feel how that rolls the shoulders back and it bells the heart open, all right? And then fold forward in your yoga mudra. Being kind, listening to the body, don't force it. Soften those knees as much as you need to. Breathe and breathe. 
and then release the hands. Arms, hands go down the back of the legs and step that right leg back. So what he says is the, the foundational relationship that we need to have is a vertical relationship. And if you think about all of the things we've been talking about, the eight limbs of yoga, the five sheaths of the body, that's very vertical, right? It's about going in and in and in and in. So our vertical relationships is our relationship to ourself and our relationship to a connection to the universe. So I drop the right knee down, left knee is right over the ankle, and I'm setting the hips back, toes rise up. And so with your relationship to the universe, you might define that as being part of something larger than yourself. You might define it as your relationship to God, your relationship to the divine. That's totally up to you what resonates most with you. Curl the back toes under, step it back, down dog. Walk your dog out. So this vertical relationship, step the left foot forward, is at the, the foundation of our self-realization. Who am I? Who am I? And what Anand goes on to share, drop that knee. Low runners lunge, allow the hips to relax down is he talks about how when we don't have a true relationship with the self, when we're not in relationship with ourself, we go out, exhale those hips back, toes rise up, fold over the leg. Breathing here into those beautiful hamstrings, a heavy heel, tractioning the heel back, feeling how that lights up the back of the leg. Inhale it forward. Curl the back toes under, ground the hands, step it back, down dog, walk your, your dog out. Tailbone rises, head hangs heavy. And let's float that right leg back and up. If you like three-legged dog, if not, no worries, leave it down. Roll the foot on the ankle. So when you don't have a firm relationship with yourself, Step that foot forward, coming into the Virabhadrasana one. What it means is that we go out seeking, you know, our self um, realization, who we are. We go out and seek it in our horizontal relationships. We go out and seek that fulfillment. We seek the love. We seek the validation from others in our life. Breathing here in your Vera one, beautiful open heart. Maybe taking Gyan Mudra, that OK symbol, really open up. And then step off onto that right foot, coming up into Karate Kid. Hands are still in Gyan Mudra, the backs of the hands come down, the palms float. And then float it out into Vera three. Good focus gaze. And then come on up. Karate Kid. One more time. Vera three. Good focus gaze. And it's okay if you wiggle. It's okay if the, if the foot touches down. Look, I'm falling all over the place. It's not funny how you're like, it's okay if I wiggle. I was, I was totally solid. And then I start talking about getting wiggly and I'm, I'm wiggly. Anyways, wherever you are. Just catch yourself and come on back. Breathe through it. Karate Kid with Gyan Mudra, if you'd like. And Warrior One. So the thing I love about this vertical relationship with the self, beautiful arch to the thoracic spine, really squeeze the kidneys and the adrenals, which, is, which are just above the waistline in the back of the body. And then hands come down, other side of the foot. Step it back, down dog. <laughs> Are you sure, Jackie? We did runner's lunch twice on the, 
on the um, on one side and not on the other. Oh man, I thought I was being so good. Ah, okay, let's do runner's lunge. So now I'm confused. All right, stepping. I thought I stepped the right foot forward. All right, step the left foot forward. I think we did them both, Jackie. <laughs> Breathing here. Breathing here. Christine, I heard you say that I'm a little bit cut off in portrait. I'm going to go ahead and um, change the angle of my computer screen a little bit. Breathing here. Whichever side of runner's lunge you didn't do. Oh, it's so fun, right? So fun. Let's try this. Let's see if that angle's better. All right. So hopefully you've gotten your runner's lunge in, in a, in a way that evens out the body. Breathing the hands into the mat, feet into the mat. And let's float that left leg back and up, stretch it up, reach it up, roll the foot on the ankle. Another breath and step it forward. Coming into your Virabhadrasana one. And lift it up. Shoulders down the back. Breathing here in your warrior one. Another breath. And then we're stepping off. And we're coming up into our bakasana. Take our gyan mudra if we'd like. Palms face up. And... With the vertical relationship, that kind of drilling down, floating into your Vera three, and being mindful that your, your balance might be quite different on one side of the body than it is on the other. I'm much stronger on the other side. Floating up, Vakasana. And again, warrior three. Beautiful. Really feeling that glute engaging on the left. Brain pose. Oh, I almost lost it. Warrior three. Oh, I did lose it. So take your time to ground down that leg if you lose it and then come back into it. Don't give up. And then, Bakasana. It's so good for your cerebellum. So if you're really working, you know, when you have those moments of struggle where you're like, oh my gosh, this is hard, okay? When you're struggling, the paradigm shift to make is to realize I am really building a lot of neuronal growth in my brain. I'm strengthening my cerebellum. You know, when it's hard, it means that our brain is expanding, strengthening in order to build our capacity. Hands are up, and then bringing those hands down. Coming into your down dog. Walking your heels out. Tailbone rises, head hangs heavy. Whew. And let's widen the knees and touch the toes and come on down. And with this vertical relationship, you know, the thing that comes to mind for me is our koshas, right? The sheaths of the body, which are like the skin of an onion going in and in and in. You know, our relationship to our physical body, which can be really loaded with a lot of shame, a lot of guilt. Our relationship with our energetic body our relationship with our heart mind our relationship with our wise self vinyana maya kosha and then our relationship with our bliss body right it goes in and in and in more and more subtle more and more refined and staying here in child's pose, but there's something I wanted to read to you that I love. This is a, a Rumi quote, and he says here, 
If you are irritated by every rub, how will you be polished? And that's really at the heart of what we're doing, right? We're polishing, we're drilling down, we're getting more and more, more and more um, refined. Arm stretch forward, breathing here in your child's pose. And then as you're ready, Grounding the hands, curl the toes, lift the hips, down dog. Head hangs heavy, tailbone rises up, and head hangs down. And seeing here, you know, with when it comes down to the sheaths of our body, our physical self, our energetic self, our heart mind, our wisdom self, and then our bliss body, you know, where do you feel like you want to just draw your energy to send yourself love and acceptance? Another breath. And then float that leg back and up, stretch it up, reach it up, and step it forward. Coming forward into your warrior one. Reaching, lifting up. And then open it up into your warrior two. Shoulders are down the back. Breathing here, right? And straighten the leg and glide forward and come on down into your triangle pose, softening that right knee. Left arm stretches up, reaches up. Breathing here. And then float it up. Trikonasana. And warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. And take reverse. So dance this out, right? Dancing warrior, reverse. And then side angle. So breathing into your relationship with self. Breathing into the things you say to yourself. Knowing that being in relationship with ourself, this vertical relationship and how we connect to the divine It's like effectively our bedrock, it's our foundation. And then float that arm down and around, warrior two. And let's turn the toes so that we're facing forward. And come on down. Come on down into our forward fold. So with our forward fold, make sure that we have a really glued down energy on the outer line of the foot. Don't roll onto the inner ankles. Toes come in a little bit narrower than the heels. And then we drop down. And if you're feeling really tight, you can put your hands on blocks. You can put your hands on your hips. You can put your hands on your mat. If you do put your hands on your mat, your fingertips are in line with the tips of the toes. And you just drop the head down. Hmm. And breathing here. Breathing into the back of the legs. Another breath. And float the hands up, hands under shoulders, tailbone rises up. Beautiful long spine. And again, come on down. And then walk the hands around to the front of the mat. Hands frame the foot. Shoulders down the back. Drop that knee down. And then open up. Beautiful. Open heart. Hips are dropping down. 
And take your twist. Left elbow catches the right knee, opening it up. And your choice if you leave your knee down here or if you curl your toes under and come up into your Anjaneyasana, twisting, Pavrita Anjaneyasana. Another breath. Hands frame the foot and step it back. Down dog. Walk your dog out. Head hangs heavy. And then widen those knees and touch the toes and come on down. Sitting down, folding down, arms reach forward. And just allow yourself to melt down. Hmm. Another breath. And walk it up. Yeah, Christine, I think you should turn your device. Turn your device so it's also landscape. And I think that would be a lot better. Walk your um, dog out, plugging the hands in, settling the, the heels down. Head hangs down. Breathing. And then float that left leg back and up, stretch it up, reach it up, roll the foot on the ankle if you'd like. Allow the heel to settle down. Another breath. And then step that left foot forward. Coming into your Virabhadrasana one. Floating up, shoulders down the back. Hmm. And then open it up into our Vera 2. Feeling yourself just stretching fingertip to fingertip. And thinking again of your relationship with this body, this amazing, beautiful body, this body that serves you. And straighten that leg and come on and glide into your triangle pose and come on down. Hmm. Breathing here, trikonasana, triangle pose. Really fold that left hip underneath as you stretch the top arm up, breathing. Hmm. And then float on up. Here too. And then we go through our dance, right? Of reverse and then side angle. So we can inhale as we come up, exhale into reverse. Inhale, exhale, side angle. And just really beautiful water falling arms. Let's do one more round. And coming up into your Vera two. And then hands either side of the foot, come on down. Down dog, walk your feet out. Head hangs heavy. <sighs> Tailbone rises up. And again, come down into your child's pose. Touch the toes, sit back. Thank you, Jelly. <sighs> Isn't that interesting? The messages we receive. Hmm. Breathing here. And again, this vertical relationship to self, because there are so many layers to who we are. Again, our relationship to our physical body, our relationship to our energetic body, how we show up energetically in the world with positivity, 
or possibly with joy or hope, or maybe with fear, with anxiety, right? And remember what we talked about yesterday, bringing the hands in, curl the toes, lift the hips down, dog. With, you know, the, the biggest, the foundation of fear, come on forward into plank and breathe here in plank. Draw the belly in. Plugging hands under the shoulders. So the foundation of fear is when you're not, you don't feel okay with who you are. When you, when you feel bad about yourself, because then you're not grounded. And that's effectively what Anand was sharing as well. So continuing to breathe in your plank. And then come on down, knees, chest, chin, Ashtang Pranam. Ground the belly, hands under shoulders, and lift up. Beautiful squeeze to the back body. And every time we look outside of ourselves for validation that we're okay, it becomes really unsettling when someone criticizes you, possibly criticizes your weight. It becomes very unsettling, right? Come on down. And inhale, lift up, right? Because you're ungrounded. And that means that effectively you are subject to the winds of life. And, you know, the, the course that I took with um, Dr. Tal Ben-Shahar, so just floating up and down. So I haven't talked to you all about Tal too much. He's a Harvard-trained positive psychologist, and he talks about how there are two types of self-esteem. There's obviously many, but he's, he divides it. In this instance, this filter, he talks about it in two different ways. He talks about coming up onto the knees, press the hands into the mat, puppy dog stretch, folding down, breathing here into those hands, press the hands. He talks about how we have... Um, um, dependent self-esteem coming up into your down dog. Head hangs heavy. Let's float that right leg back and up. Stretch it up and step it forward. Coming into our Vera one. Step off. Lift up. And then in our Virabhadrasana one, step off onto our right foot. Ground our energy down and float the left leg up. So with dependent self-esteem, that's when we're constantly looking outside of ourselves for validation. Okay. So hands can be at the heart space. We're here in tree pose. So the, the knee is out to the side, foot is on the leg, any place on the leg, except the side of the knee. Okay. So you can put it down here. You can put it on the shin. You can put it up onto the thigh. And with this dependent self-esteem, this is where we put a post on Facebook and we watch how many likes it gets. Okay, we take a test and we watch for our grade. And if the grade comes in and it's good, we feel smart. If the grade comes in and it's bad, we feel not smart. You know, it's like when we have a good hair day, we feel good. We have a bad hair day when we, we don't feel good. When someone says that we're fat, we feel bad. When, you know, someone says, oh man, have you lost some weight? You feel good, okay? That's dependent, self-esteem. It's outside of us. It's us re um, relying upon our horizontal relationships to validate who we are. Okay. Another breath here in your Vrikshasana. And then float that foot down and come on down and sit. Hands in the heart space. And just really get down into the hips. And then float up onto that leg. Feet out. Toes point forward. Reach the arms out and again, come forward into our forward fold. We forgot to do it on the other side, so we're doing it here. So just allow the head to hang heavy. <sighs> Breathing. So that's dependent self-esteem. Now the other type of self type of self-esteem and with dependent self-esteem, the thing that's important to realize 
hands were walked forward underneath the shoulders. Beautiful long line, beautiful long spine. And come on down, fold down. And then soften those knees and roll it up. Turn your feet. Vera one. And then hands either side of the foot. Come on down. Down dog. Hmm. Tailbone rises up and head hangs heavy. So with independent self-esteem, with dependent self-esteem, we're, we're constantly dependent self-esteem. We're constantly comparing ourselves to others. It's like life is a zero sum game. Hips are squared forward, arms reach up. So if you win, that must mean that I lose, all right? If you're good at something, you know, that might make me feel like insecure because I'm not as good at that. Breathing here in your Vera one. Another breath. And then step off, ground down into that left leg and float up into your Vrikshasana. So remembering in Vrikshasana, we get really grounded in that left leg and then we float it up. So with independent self-esteem, we're always comparing ourselves to ourselves. So as we're learning a new skill, we look, you know, huh, how, how well did I did, do this a week ago? How well, you know, did I do this last year? And oh, look, look at all my growth. And the beautiful thing about this vertical relationship with self or this independent self-esteem is you're in the driver's seat, okay? When somebody comes up to you and says, you're fat, it's easier to shrug it off because you've got, ah, you've got this relationship with yourself. You're grounded, right? You're grounded. And then we're gonna step it back, bring the hands together and really breathe into those legs. Hands are at the heart space, set the hips down. It makes you steadier, all right? And then step off. Soles of the feet come out wide and another forward fold coming down. It doesn't mean that you're perfectly unflappable, but you're less flappable. And maybe in time, you know, I'm not there yet, but maybe in time you'll be, you know, unflappable. Because again, the relationship, the key relationship is your vertical relationship with yourself. You know, and you can think of yourself as that tree. Walk the hands up, hands under shoulders, beautiful, long spine. Soften those knees and come on up. Turn the feet, Vera one. And hands either side of the foot, come on down, down dog. Walk your dog out. Head hangs heavy, tailbone rises up. <sighs> Another breath. And then your choice, if you want to come with me through a vinyasa or if you want to go down into child's pose or rest and down dog. And knees, chest, chin. Come on down. Ground the hips, hands under shoulders. Emma, um, we've got just another moment of flow. And then we're going into Shavasana and then we're going to meditate. So we'll be done at the top of the hour. Come on down. Plug the hands into the earth. Anahatasana. Puppy dog stretch. And then from here, let's come on to our back body. Walking it down. Bringing the knees into the chest. And rock it out left to right. Have that feel really good on the back body. Roll the feet on the ankles. Maybe roll the head on the neck. Hmm. Soles of the feet on the earth. And windshield wiper the knees. Look in one direction as you twist open. 
And inhale the knees up and look in the other direction. So just rolling it back and forth. And I invite you again to breathe into this connection to yourself. Connection to who you are. Mm, hug the knees into the chest. And feel here, feel you know, with all the sheaths of the body, the physical body, the energy body, the heart mind, the wisdom body, the bliss body. You know, where do you want to just send some love, send some mindfulness? Swimming those knees around, massaging the back body. Hug those knees in. And then your choice, you can either go straight into Shavasana or you can bring the soles of the feet together and allow the knees to drop open, palms up, breathing into the inner groin. This is your Supta Baddha Konasana. Hmm. Just release and relax down. For this moment, letting go of the thinking mind, letting go of self-inquiry, swadhyaya. And allow the body to melt down, melt down into the earth. Final relaxation pose where we integrate all of this energy, prana, that we've stirred in the body it's almost like our body becomes a sponge and we allow our bodies to soak it up, soak it up. Continuing to just relax and release down. So Rumi says, that your heart knows the way. And he advises us to run in that direction. And he also says, the universe is not outside of you. Look inside yourself. Everything that you want, you already are. He goes on to counsel us saying, your task is not to seek for love but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. So sitting here, as you're ready, bringing movement into the body, wiggling fingers and toes, rolling your hands on your wrists, rolling your feet on your ankles. Hmm. And then rolling over onto the right side and cradle your heart and give yourself the biggest hug. Sending yourself so much love. And then carefully press yourself up into an easy seat. Nice tall spine. Mm. 
Let's take a nice big inhale. And we'll ohm out together. together. And 